of an argument of archives sound maybe like a bit like an advanced food recipe for, for MasterChef. Um, but maybe it's not such a bad parallel. The idea is to uh, plug apart what you know, analyze it, and then hopefully put it back together again in a better way, or at least how we see the archives. So my intention, at least, is to present some thoughts about how uh, on the production of archaeological knowledge and how to maximize the potential for scientific knowledge and research in an archaeological archive and explore a possible approach and a method on how to get there. So um, how easy is it to find all the significant information from one geographical farm or locality or even a specific artifact from the beginning of archaeological science until the most recent archaeological activity in your archives. What is significant and is the same information significant to everyone? How many different sections is your archive divided into and how many different systems, analog or digital? How certain can you be that all the relevant information and documentation actually made it to the archives in the first place? And why did it and why did it not end up in the archive? How does the content of the archive relate to the archaeological artifacts they describe and belong to? Surely an archaeological archive is a result of complex processes, and those practices and processes is in turn what produce an archive archaeological knowledge. The production of archaeological knowledge is a comprehensive process with contributing uh, actors from different disciplines and sciences who all in different ways influence the production of knowledge. The knowledge generated from these practices and processes is what constitutes an archaeological archive. But contrary to how archaeological context is being continuously and conscientiously Interpreted in relation to biases such as scientific paradigms and history of science, the archaeological practice, however, is rarely subjected to the same meta archaeological scrutiny. Because, as this is some example of, the archaeological source material is by nature fragmented. By effect, the creation of scientific meaning born out of these sources is necessarily based on degrees of interpretation. The degree of fragmentation in an archaeological archive, however, whether it be related to data collection, management, connection to the artifacts, and or their availability, will also have a major impact on the archaeological knowledge as well as the future potential for research. And finally, on the basic knowledge and understanding of our cultural heritage, the meaning of things and places. A reflexive attitude towards how archaeological knowledge is produced and managed through practices and processes is therefore imperative. Because, as a loss, Session holder told us the contents of an archaeological archive have the potential to act both as a descriptive source of archaeological context and artifacts, as well as a relic of past theoretical, ideological, methodological, and societal circumstances. All in different ways has affected and keeps affecting the enactment of practice. Other sciences, such as anthropology, ethnography, and science and technology, technology studies, have made some contributions to research concerning science practices, the production of knowledge, and the relation to archives and archiving practices. What most of this research has in common is the basic assumption that science and knowledge is created through performance. In other words, the enactment of practice in a specific context. Therefore, I will argue that not only does the archive material explain the context, but rather the archive material and the context are simultaneously created through a continuous toggle effect. 
This, rem this reminds us that scientific and professional fields outside archaeological science are also taking part in and contributing to the production of archaeological knowledge. And one example here is the science of archives and record keeping. These are pictures from some of the archaeological archives at the Museum of Cultural History of Oslo. This is only the most, this first two is the most recent uh, archive from the archaeological um, documentation. But this is only a part of it, there's lots of different sections. So, the physical archive, the archivists and the archive systems are all actors included in the practices and processes making and shaping the archive. How the archives are managed, classified, described and stored, as well as their availability are all crucial elements in the production of knowledge and the management of potential research opportunities. If the contents of the archive are not simply described to make them a reality out there, but also take part in working upon, modifying and transforming that reality, then a deconstruction of archaeological archives is necessary in order to understand the hows and the whys of archaeological knowledge practices, which in turn affects the potential for future scientific knowledge and research. One method of deconstructing an archaeological archive is by approaching the study of these archives as an ethnography of archaeological practices. I propose and hope to be able to carry out a research project to map and analyze different actor networks participating in these processes. My aim is to understand the enactment of practices created through the interaction between actors and networks and the production of archaeological knowledge. The management of knowledge in the archaeological archives and how they interact. I intend to apply Bruno Latour's active network theory as a method for mapping actors and networks, and this will hopefully give an insight into how archaeological knowledge and archives are being created, how they are organized and managed through the actors' performance of practice. As I mentioned earlier, the process and practices that an archaeological archive is made up of includes the involvement of several different professional and scientific disciplines. My experience, therefore, suggests that the comp a comprehensive process of knowledge production and management does not consist of one single actor network, but rather is a conglomerate of more or less separate actor networks with different or parallel realities, interacting with or relating to each other, and so creating multiplicities. I hope to be able to explore these different or parallel realities, uh, how they relate to each other, but their creation of scientific meaning and tra translation translational knowledge within and between actor networks unfolds, and how these practices influence the production of knowledge, the management of, and the scientific research potential in archaeological archives. In this analytic process, it is important that we are not confined to make a complex reality fit within one single actor network, unlike a more or less a traditional and straightforward application of actor network theory dictates. On the contrary, it is important to open up for the possibility of a number of different realities and networks, which to various extent relate to each other in multiple ways. A possible solution to accommodate these complex realities is through applying a somewhat different approach to actor network theory called material semiotics. Unfortunately, the time limit of this talk, talk gives me little time to go into details of material semiotics, but I would gladly share references afterwards if anyone is interested. So then, to sum up. The main objective for a deconstruction of an archaeological archive is to find out how best to manage, how best to maintain the complexities of an archaeological archive in order to maximize its potential for scientific knowledge and research. Based on the data found in the archaeological archives in the Museum of Cultural History in Oslo, my ambition is to map how these processes that create and manage archaeological knowledge unfolds and how this knowledge is organized and managed in the archive. 
The purpose is to find out and isolate which actor networks are present and partaking in these processes. Whether it is more than one actor network with parallel realities, and if so, what consequences will this have for the production and management of archaeological knowledge? After identifying the actors' and networks, it should be possible to analyze why these actors and networks play out the way they do. And finally, through awareness and a reflexive attitude towards the possibilities and limitations in the performances and acted within and between the actors and networks in the production of archaeological knowledge, I believe it is possible to find opportunities for improvement in order to enhance the value of the archaeological archive to be greater as individual components. Not to mention, more available and more attractive for future use and research. Thank you for your attention. Oh, my God.